We'll now continue with session two of the workshop and the subcommittee that planned this session included Christy Ebai and Patrick Stover. I now have the pleasure of introducing Christy as the moderator for this session. Chris is professor in the Department of Global Health at the University of Washington, and her research focuses on the impacts of an adaptation to climate variability and change, including extreme events, thermal stress, foodborne safety and security, and vector-borne diseases. Chris has been an author on multiple national and international climate change assessments including the fourth U.S. National Climate Assessment and the IPCC Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5. Christy? Thank you very much, Naomi. Thanks to everyone who returned from the earlier session, and thanks to those who just joined. As you heard, the theme for the session is resiliency, and we're going to explore that theme through three presentations. There'll be a presentation on complex dynamic systems, a presentation on resiliency in the current food system, and a look at what we're going to need for resiliency going into the future. Following the presentations, there'll be a short question and answer for each presentation, and at the end, there'll be a panel discussion. As questions arise, please type them into the chat box and we will share those with the speakers during the Q&A and the discussion sessions. The full bios for all the speakers can be found on the website, so I will do just brief introductions. And first, I'd like to introduce my co-host of this session, Patrick Stover, who's going to recap the remarks he made earlier today. Patrick is Vice Chancellor and Dean for Agriculture and Life Sciences at Texas A&M AgriLife, and he's director of Texas A&M AgriLife Research. As you heard, he's a member of the planning committee and of the Food Forum. Patrick. Thank you very much, Christy. Um, so my task here is just to give a very brief summary of the background for this workshop and to give a brief summary of session one for those of you who are not able to listen in if you were not, I really encourage you to go back when these are available, because it was a really outstanding session with, with excellent discussion. But as we, as the planning committee thought about this workshop, we realized that we really do live in a critical time in human history, where now we fully understand how food systems, people, and environment and the economy are interconnected and interdependent on each other. And when I say understand, we don't understand these in details, but we understand that they are connected. And we understand that all of these domains are at risk if not brought into harmony with one another. And we also recognize that this will require bringing a systems thinking approach to all aspects of agriculture, food, health, the economy, and the environment. Much of this workshop was really built off the backbone of a National Academy of Sciences report that was published in 2015 that developed a framework for assessing the effects of the food system. And that is we now understand that expectations of the food system have changed. After World War II, the expectation was a, of agriculture was to produce food, fiber, and fuel for the growing economy and in fact overproduce. Now we understand that there are other outcomes that we have to consider if we are going to have sustainable agriculture and sustainable food systems. And that's what this framework report addressed. So this framework report, if you look at the infographic on the left, really is a tool for how we think about making decisions about agriculture and food, whether it's policy decisions or practice decisions about how we go about producing the food that we need to feed people. And the report highlights that when we consider any effects of the food system, we should really think about four primary outcomes. That is human health, environmental health, social health, and economic health. And all of these are critically important and they are all interconnected. The report also emphasizes that when one does an analysis of the food system to make a decision, 
one should consider the entire value chain, everything from farm inputs all the way to consumer health, consumer behavior. Because all too often we've seen when we more narrowly examine the food system, we see unintended consequences then across the entire food and agriculture value chain. The report also emphasizes that the food system is a complex system. It is an adaptive system and must be viewed as such, and that there are disruptions and dynamics that occur across the food system, such as social movements, which we've seen, weather, including climate change, um, market effects, and now we're even seeing pandemics. And all of these should be considered when we, can, when we think about how we analyze the food system. And finally, the report really emphasizes that we really need to continue to advance the metrics, measures, and standards of evidence we need in each of these outcome domains, health, environment, social, and economic, so we can make the best science-informed decisions and understand the trade-offs across these four outcomes because any one policy or any one decision is likely to result in conflicts across these various outcomes. During the session that we heard this morning, this framework again served as a springboard for the presentations that we heard. We heard um, Ricardo Salvador talk about social inequities that exist across the entire agriculture value chain, everything from production to consumption. We heard Cynthia Rosenzweig address issues of climate change that are relative to agriculture, both the contribution of agriculture to climate change, but also the effect of climate change on agriculture itself. And we heard Paula Daniels introduce the concept of agroecology and how we have to consider food as a public good and the role that regional food systems could play in, 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 in adding more diversity and resiliency into the food system, much like the energy sector has diversified over the past decade or more. So I encourage all of you who did not see session one to go back and view that. Very, very informative and a very lively discussion following those presentations. So Christy, I turn this back over to you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Appreciate that excellent summary.